much for tuning in to watch this video. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for new punk rock videos every week and tap the bell to get notified when new videos drop. My name is Aaron Micklow and I'm here at Rebellion Festival with Risky and the Ridicule. Introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Jordan. Lead guitar. I'm Scott, lead vocals. I'm Matt, I play drums. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're very hungover today. You had a great show last night. Yeah, it was really good. Bootleg. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you made yeah, that, really you're good. a singer. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's ridiculous. Really hungover. Yeah, bootleg social. It was a really good gig. Yeah. Played with Fluffy Machine. Abrascadabra, D D cracks. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. 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 They were all wicked. It was a good. It was a good gig. Yeah. Uh, so for you, how yeah. do you how do you combat the hangover? You're obviously on your second beer for today. But yeah. What are some? That's <laughs> it. I'm just trying to eat a little bit and drink lots of beer. That's that's my that's my <laughs> tips for success. Little and often. Yeah. That's the, that's the secret. No caffeine. You don't introduce caffeine into it. No. Nah. People over here don't really do that. Yeah, yeah. I'm, like, I'm dying for a cup of tea right now. Please. Do you? Yeah. I was like, I got coffees here, and I was like, where's the fucking coffee? Yeah. <laughs> just like, they just had like tea in the apartment. I'm like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> I, I prefer coffee, but yeah. <laughs> actually um recording your new album right now yeah can we talk about that this is your fourth album right yeah so you've been in the studio can you share some stories from the studio how's it going how far along are you uh we've recorded it and it's being mixed at the minute so we should have our first mixes back uh in like i don't know two weeks or something yeah two or three weeks we'll have the uh, mixes back from that so it's all finished um, yeah. other than yeah the mixing and mastering of it um so it's yeah. pretty pretty uneventful to be fair, the uh the actual album. We just all go in on our own bits. Mm. Yeah. Um I felt like my head was gonna explode a few times, <laughs> but apart from that it was good. I only had to sing a few songs every night, so that's fine. Matt Matt had the pleasure of doing drums on the hottest day ever. Yeah, yeah, that was eventful. So the hottest day ever yeah. in felt England. Like it was melting. Absolutely melting, but mm. It's yeah. done. We managed it, and it, to be fair, it was probably easier than some of the other albums that we've done. So yeah, yeah, because we've we've got the process in place now. So yeah, yeah for it's, sure, it's sounding really, really amazing. Big up, big up, Oz Crags at Hidden Track yeah, Studios. Absolutely, absolutely nailed it. your guys recording process i know you know every band kind of has their own rhythms and this being your fourth album and you kind of having your rhythm down what what is your process so we we demo first um we demoed like half the album and then what we do is we go in uh, to the other studio and uh lay down like guide tracks uh, guide vocals and then he'll he'll go in and do the drums and that's about it yeah and we'll just all go in and add our own bits when we when we need to be there, mm -hmm. I don't like being in the studio really. Um, I like demos because we're all together playing together and all that lot. But yeah. I can't be asked listening to these boys play <laughs> guitar or <laughs> and play fucking drums. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. Um, sorry, boys. No, it's yeah. fine, it's fine. <laughs> and they they can't be bothered listening to me sing either, so it's fine. Yeah. yeah when you do the the parts individually. Sorry. Get your, no, get your beer. <laughs> I don't want you to, to <laughs> vomit all over the floor <laughs> in here. We um we were a lot more prepped for this album, so it's gone a lot smoother. Um, in terms of writing all the songs, we we wrote it over like two, two, three, two or three years, something like that. So, oh wow! Um, from the lockdown, basically, we started writing it. Uh, whereas before, it's all been done in done in like six months, really. All the other albums, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe less. Absolute so shambles. The other albums, yeah. to be fair, <laughs> yeah. they come out all right. So, yeah, fuck it. it's good. Yeah. No, your songs are great. <laughs> one 
you did um, you did a Kickstarter for it to help fund the yeah. recording fees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so can you talk more about that? Obviously, you sold yeah, merch so bundles and... Yeah, we, we longed off Kickstarter, to be fair. We just did it for our website and PayPal and all that, like, linked it all up. Um, big up Kyle Huntington for that. Well done. And Maz, Ben Marion. Um, yeah, we just put a load of packages out. We reached our target in like a week. So w like we were surprised by that. We didn't expect it yeah. to go so good. You know what I mean? It's, it's been absolutely amazing. Yeah. The response to it was just ridiculous. We, yeah. were, we were nervous about it. Um, and then obviously just sat back and sort of watched it all just take off. Um, yeah. yeah, incredibly grateful. Yeah, we're, incredibly we're doing grateful. it without a label this time around. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, we were, we were really pleased that they put their hands in their pockets and DIY, lovely. Yeah, well, you have a really strong fan base. I mean, seeing you play at Wonkfest, you know, just you have a strong fan base. I saw someone, one of your fans came up to me and she was like, I saw your interview on Risky and the Ridicule. They're one of my favorite bands. I'm so excited. <laughs> That's cool. You nice. know, and yeah. um, just there is a good buzz about you guys because when I was preparing for that, I was like, you know, who should I interview? I'm really not familiar with any of these bands. Like, what's, what's the deal? Who's good? Mm. And, you know, you were the ones I was like, I've got this many slots. Like, who do I pick? It's always hard for me to pick and choose. It's just realistically, I can't do everybody because it's yeah. just me. Mm -hmm. And they were like, you have to do Risky and the Ridicule. They're great. You and you are, right, you are you, great. You made the right decision, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to be honest. Shut up. <laughs> you did. <laughs> oh, my God. No, you guys, you guys are really great. You have a lot of great songs. Um, let's talk about your song Blue Jacket. That one has some really intense lyrics. Oh yeah. Yeah, mm. can you can you talk about what that song is about exactly? It's about racism in this country and stuff and how people kind of latched onto that and how the government used that as a tool to divide the country basically. Um, yeah. so that's what the song is. Have a listen, make your own mind up about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that was I mean, obviously I'm not being American, I only saw like the news clips about it, so I wasn't exactly sure what was going on, but I did see a lot of, you know, my UK friends were really upset about it. Yeah. Oh, it was just ridiculous. Just people were lied to, you know, and yeah, it, so yeah, the song was just a kind of uh, an answer to that. Um, not every song we do is political, but um, that one was very easy to cram that into like a three minute sort of little pop punk sort of thing. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Yeah, that's why we did it, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But then on the flip side of it, one of your most streamed songs on Spotify, you covered Lana Del Rey. Yeah. <laughs> Young Lana and Del. beautiful. That was fun. That was Big up Lana Del Rey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How did that come to be? Because that's, I mean, it's a great song, but what is it that made you guys want to cover that being like this punk band that you are and you're all oi with your suspenders well. and shit? And <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, Lana rung me up and she was like, look, I really want you to cover this song. And I was like, Lana... Yeah, right. No, <laughs> what happened? I, I love Lana Del Rey. I've I got no shame there. I think she's wicked. Um, I wanted to cover that song. Um, we, we'd never done a cover before and I thought it was a real good song. So yeah. um, that, that's pretty much it. We jammed it out and yeah, that was it. Music kind of fell into place pretty easily for that version of it Worked as well. Really You see that now with a lot of bands. I mean, even just from a standpoint of bands getting out there more with, you know, in the time that we live in with social media and algorithms and numbers, that is a, a proven way. They're like, do some covers. And mm -hmm. it, it's a way to like really hit. For instance, like when the Interrupters covered Billie Eilish, Bad Guy, like mm -hmm. that's like one of their most viewed ones. And it's yeah. like, they have a full discography of their own songs, but one of their most viewed ones is a cover. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we're, we're sick of it already, to be fair. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, it's very, it's, is it on my stream song? Or I think it's it's, it's on one of your one most of them, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna have to it's play that there. forever, unfortunately. But <laughs> oh well, it's what it is. I yeah. like it. I like how yeah. you guys said beautiful. 
<laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> We're from the UK, America. Beautiful. <laughs> I say, you guys add an extra syllable in there. I'm just like, beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> oh, you're making it sound weird now. <laughs> <Fuck's> <laughs> I like the way you say it better. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, so can you guys talk about, obviously, you know, this new album coming out, this being your fourth one. Can you talk about the evolution of the band from, you know, the time you started? I saw you, videos from, like, 2013. Is that the year you started or around that time? Uh, 2011 we started. 2011. And then uh, just a natural progression of... Because we had a, like as a four piece, we had a really awesome bass player yeah. who would fill out all the, you know, all the empty space. Oh, then about five years ago, <laughs> about five years ago, Jordan joined and lead mm. guitar just kind of came into its own. Um, yeah. This album in particular, the lead guitar really absolutely shines. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just jealous, mate. <laughs> well, I, I think all of us have kind of, we really found our groove on this album. Yeah. I think, like I said, the writing process of it was we took our time with it. We really wanted to make sure it was all right. We weren't writing. When we started writing it, we weren't gearing up for an album. We were just writing for the sake of writing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that kind of made it a bit easier. Um, yeah, me and me and Jim, the other guitarist, who is on the merch stand right now. Thank you, Jim. Um, Thank you, Jim. Uh, <laughs> Go make the sales. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, He's the best talker yeah, as well, he'd, to, he'd be be he'd be, here, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, he'd be much better with him than any of us. <laughs> interview yeah. yeah yeah um but yeah you know i think the sounds just sort of naturally progressed we haven't it's not been a conscious decision to do that at all it, ju it just has happened that way yeah obviously it started off with just uh jim and scott doing it acoustic yeah no um, one no one wanted to book us as headliners when we were doing the acoustic stuff so yeah we had to we had to get the bass and the drums in and that. So it was yeah. just like against me, against me. St if, are you familiar with that American yeah, band? Yeah, so yeah. they started. and it, it was just um, Laura and the drummer, and that was it. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. then it was like okay, yeah. gonna have so to two pieces are well fashionable around here now. <laughs> I tell you, everyone's a fucking two piece. Like <laughs> it's because it don't cost any money to get them to the venues, and the, the riders are small. I swear. <laughs> You don't have any social media, Scott. You don't have any no. personal. That was an active choice you made. Can you talk about that? It's too full on, like running the band stuff. Do yeah. you know what I mean? I, don't, I can't have bare social like that as well. Just the notifications are a bit too much. I'd rather be like writing music or yeah, with my friends drinking or whatever. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, mm. I, I don't really like social media too much. Yeah, to be honest with you. Yeah. Mm. But don't you feel that sometimes maybe it's it's helped you in a lot of ways of like to get you out there? Yeah, totally. Like I'm I'm part of the Instagram and the Facebook and I do all the posts and stuff at most of the time um, and it's it's a necessity 100% yeah. um, and it's definitely helped us like if we didn't have yeah. it like we probably wouldn't be playing this today so yeah um, yeah but I mean it is a thing like I I was having a talk with a label back in Los Angeles you know trying to help a friend you know get on the label to put out their new record and they literally told me yeah, your friend has done a lot of stuff, but they don't have enough followers because labels just don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. And even chatting with Daryl from Coxbar um, a couple of days ago, he was saying the same thing. Yeah, it used to be the labels that would push you. Mm. And now it's like they just want artists to be done. And it's a really weird time that we're, yeah. we're in of like, it's like, OK, we, we all the, like that label literally told me your friend is great, but he doesn't have enough followers. He needs to build his own audience and get a draw and then maybe we'll sign him. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's standard now. That's yeah, standard. yeah. and mean, it's a weird thing. Yeah. It's, it's, just, it's, it's just crazy, isn't it? Like, I, I mean, we don't have hundreds of thousands of followers on any of our platforms, but they're all genuine. Yeah. Um, so we're all, you know, we're pretty happy with that, you know, like nothing's been paid for, nothing's been bought. It's all, it's all real. Same with all the Spotify stuff and, and everything else that goes with it. As much as it is just a number, it's nice to know that... We've got solid fans. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like they, they all got tattoos and, you know what I mean, all risky tattoos. Uh, 
yeah, we, we love our fans, they're the fucking best. Mm. Um, they keep us going. So. <laughs> thing i mean it's better to have you know a smaller number of really solid fans that are going to support you as opposed to a larger number if none of those people are buying shows or yeah. ticket mm. tickets to your shows or merch or supporting you like when you did your kickstarter for your new album it's yeah. like well, what yeah. do all those numbers mean then exactly. nothing yeah. Yeah, yeah built it from the ground up and it's like um we know fucking bands that are on like sony and you know like, well branch off labels of sony and they would not sell as many tickets as we sell. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it is what it is. The dedicated mm. fans is what's up. I mean, mm. obviously it's yeah. kind of a mix of both, but it's like, yeah, you want numbers, but if you had to pick and choose, you'd want the dedicated ones for sure. Yeah, 100%, Definitely. you're right. Yeah. 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 Well, Definitely. so what else is coming up for you guys? What do you have in the works? When's the new album coming out? Do you have a date? Um, we we'll don't have a date for the album. No, it'll be autumn winter at some point i guess uh, all right sweet sounds good <laughs> definitely <laughs> news tonight. Yeah, I like that. oh no that's good <laughs> well, well that's yeah, pretty yeah. vague autumn winter yeah, yeah. Do. Didn't say maybe spring year. could be summer, could be summer. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. who knows yeah oh i think this year we'll, we'll get it out this year yeah um um then yeah busy gig in the rest of the year yeah pretty busy. to support the album and yeah um yeah. so i guess yeah we need to start thinking about when it actually comes out <laughs> Get some artwork for it as well. Have you, uh, have that, you decided well. what the singles are going to be from it? The first one? Um, We've had, like, the producer was like, that's the single, that's the single, that's the single. He's like, and he's normally bang on the money, to yeah. be fair. Yeah. So yeah. We, we might listen to him, we might not. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, we've got a rough idea, definitely. Okay. Like, I'm pleased with every single track on the album. I think like 80% of it could be singles. So yeah. Mm. That's awesome. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, just busy rest of the year gigging. Oh, sorry, Matt. I'll keep it on my back. <laughs> Can you just, yeah, there you go. That's fine. I'm used to it. That's better. <laughs> that's better. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's better. I do sit behind you, so. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to close with that. And I want to say thank you guys so much for giving me your time today. Yeah, yeah that's thank you. Uh, thank yeah, you for having thank us. You. Thank Thanks you. for coming to our Wonkfest set. You yeah. coming to the ballroom? I hope so. All right, <laughs> Many bands to film today, so I'll try and come for at least a couple songs because I do. I do love you guys. You have a new fan in me. I didn't Excellent. know who the hell you were. Yeah. Nobody uh, does. It's fine. Well, <laughs> well they will now. <laughs> America, this Hello, is America. risky and ridicule. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. We have terrible yes. teeth. <laughs> <laughs> we are risking the ridicule, and you are watching Last Rockers TV.